Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to show you how to do a monthly budget. Now, if you are a recurring subscriber, you guys already know my progress, how I do it and everything for it. But for my new incomers, hi, my name is Erica and I'm all about budgeting, creating monthly budgets, paycheck budgets, sinking funds and all the deal. And today I'm going to show you how to set up a monthly budget. Because when you're trying to, you know, get your finances together and make sure you're, you know, achieving your financial goals, uh, you need to learn how to budget specifically for your own needs and for your own, you know, paycheck system or salary. So I am a bi-weekly budgeter, meaning I get paid every two weeks. Um, currently, I am on workers' comp, so I am working with insurance, but it's like a pay schedule like I would have in my normal um, job. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. I'm going to go ahead and set up my calendar, which is what helps me look at what the month is going to look like. And then I'll just walk you through the process. So if you're wondering, this is an Erin Condren 7x9 monthly planner. Um, this is just a planner with months in it and notes. And then I'm a sticker budgeter and a sticker shop owner. So I just create stickers to make my um, budget layout. So if you're interested in any of the stickers that I use, I'll have a link down below to my shop and I'll have this planner linked down below as well. So always check the description box. So it's a new year and we're going to go ahead and set up our budget because we need to know exactly what's going on. And the best way to know what's going on is by setting up your entire template. So for me, I'm going to go ahead and set up my calendar. Now, the calendar is important for two reasons. You get to see when you're getting paid and when your bills are due. But it's also important because then you can see if you have any events going on that you might have to just add on to your budget so you won't have um, any surprises within your um, paychecks or paydays. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay this down really quickly. I wanted something that looked very refreshed, very fun. And um, it does come with bottom washi, but since it matches the kit itself, I'm not gonna do it. And I don't do date dots because I usually use all of this because I also do um, trackers in my monthly calendar. But anyway, let's look at this entirely. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark down my paydays. Now, these paydays can vary because I'm on workers' comp. In the month of January, it looks like I'm going back to work. So these paydays might change around, but I know for certain I'm getting a paycheck on the 23rd. And if, you know, everything follows how it should be, I should go ahead and get paid again on the 27th. So that is what I have of paydays currently right now. Now let me go ahead and zoom you guys in so you guys can really see how I'm looking just a tad bit because I need the whole planner to show. Then I'm going to go ahead and input my bills, the bills that I do know that are going to hit. As you guys know, I've been on this debt-free journey for three years and I paid a lot of my debt down. So most of the bills that consist now are for my house or like my apartment and any remaining debt that I have, which is basically my car. So first I'm gonna go ahead and write down my rent. My rent is 850, at least my part is. I do live with my boyfriend and he pays his part of the rent and then I pay my own. So my rent is due on the 13th because we moved on the 13th and that's how the landlord wanted to have our rent due every um, month then on. Uh, I do have a car payment which is my only debt at the moment and my car payment is $167.31 and that one is due on the 21st. Of course, along with car payments, I have car insurance, and that one is going to be, I believe it's one sixteen thirty six. However, this might change because I did get into a uh, auto payment, monthly payment instead of quarterly, so this amount might go down drastically, but we'll figure it out. And then, of course, that same day, I do have my renter's insurance, and my renter's insurance should be $20. And 
and we're gonna go ahead and just plop that right on here because they're both due on the same day now uh, anything else beside that I do have my phone bill I um, have my mobile service with spectrum and spectrum is um, $57 it's a 45 unlimited plan plus $13 insurance, I believe. So we're going to go ahead and set that where it belongs, which is on the 13th. As for any other bills, I do have my health benefits. So because I'm on workers' comp, I cannot get my medical insurance deducted from my paycheck because I don't receive a paycheck from my actual job. I receive it from an insurance company. So um, we set up... a auto deduction with my bank and they just pull my insurance out of that so my health benefits are about 133 dollars i haven't gotten the bill yet but i saw that it was like about 132 something so i'm just going to go ahead and budget for 133 and that is a deduction that happens on the fifth so that is that other than that i don't have any more bills up here because i paid off my credit union Right here, I have paid off everything, basically. And the only thing I have left over is my mom's Bank of America card. Now, if you're wondering why I say my mom's, is because I did share a credit card with her in college. Um, but I've helped her ever since to pay it off. But we have come to an agreement that once I'm done paying off my debt, I will then save up $2,000 and then pay that into her card and I'll be done with it. But first, my debt-free journey is going to come first and then um, that payment will kick in. So this one is $55. And that one is going to be on the 16th. Now the only thing that I have left is my gas bill. So I'm going to go ahead and put gas, which is the natural gas. I'm going to put natural just so you guys don't get confused with gas and gasoline. And I usually budget about $20 for it. So I'm going to go ahead and put it on the 19th because that's usually when it's due. And I am so used to putting student loan here but i just paid that off if you guys haven't seen that video i'll link up in the card above um, but i don't have anything else to pay which is kind of insane you guys like this is how my calendar looks that's it now i will go ahead and state that i have two birthdays this month i have one on the second which is my nieces and i have one on the 20th which is my sisters so i do have two birthdays on here so i will be cash flowing in those two items my little niece says she wants a gift card i'm gonna give her to amazon because that's stuff that she's been wanting so i'm just gonna go ahead and give her an amazon gift card and for my sister she never told me um so i'm just gonna go ahead and budget 100 bucks for her and we're gonna see how it works out at the end so that is how the calendar is what i set up so i can see vis visually how uh, my bills are gonna go and now with that i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna go and set up an entire um calendar or monthly budget right here so i'm gonna go ahead up and set up my january calendar um, budget so like that i know exactly what the month is going to look like for me in terms of numbers so i'm going to go ahead and use washi this is roses from my shop like i said i'm a sticker budgeter so i'm gonna go ahead and lay this down i'm gonna go ahead and take my um, budget sticker sheet right here for january and i'm gonna lay all these down and i'm gonna walk you through this of course, everything can be done in, done in um, pen and paper. I'm just a sticker budgeter because I like how it looks. Um, it makes me look at my um, budget more, especially, you know, in this debt-free journey when you can become a little unmotivated about stuff. Um, making things pretty for me helps me. Of course, anyone can be like um, Google Sheets, Excel, pen and paper, or just like a calendar view on budgeter so whatever you like is you know your option your your choice so you don't have to do it the way I do it but this is how um, 
I have it set up for myself because it's what has been working the most. So like I said, I'm going to get two paychecks. So I'm going to put paycheck one and I'm going to put paycheck number two. I know it's going to be the, oh, I put even 20. It's 2021, girl. Ooh. <laughs> it's going to be on the 13th because that's what says on my portal. And then the next one would be on the 27th. I go ahead, just wipe that out because no, I am not about to start the year with 20. We're going to start with 2021, honey. Now, I do have a set paycheck situation. So I already know that every time I get paid, the amount should be 1248.32. Like, I know that for sure. That's going to be what I'm expected to get paid. However, like I said, it might be different depending if I go back to work or not. But this is just how I see my month going. I always just budget for what I expect. And if things change along the way, then the budget can change with it. So that is the income. That is it. I left the space because... Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to get my mileage reimbursement here. So I'm just going to leave that as is. And we're going to move on to the bills section down here. Now I'm going to go ahead and quickly separate the two. And I'm using a um, small wash. I'm using some of my oopsie stickers. So don't mind that. And I'm going to set down my bills. So like I said, my bills are my health benefits. I'm expecting 133 to come out of my account. And then I have my rent for 850. My phone for $57. And then I have my mom's Bank of America card that I just quick pay her the money of 55 for the minimum payment on it. And then she does her own additional payment. And then um, my natural gas. And this one I always budget for $20. Last month in December, it was $20.94. So I was under budget by 94 cents. But that's how I usually um, guesstimate my bills because I'm so in tune with my budget. So if you want to know you know, an approximation of what your bills are. I, say, I do suggest, you know, looking back at 2020 and just collecting all your numbers and averaging them out. And then, of course, we have my car payment. This is 167.31. That is a set amount. We have my car insurance. And that one is, um, what did I say, 116, I believe. 116.36. And then we have my renter's insurance, which is $20. And that is all the bills I have. So as you guys saw, I used my calendar to, you know, get my bills and write them all down. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add that up because that is what I'm expecting my money to go towards this entire month. So I'm going to total this up going to make my lines so like that when I come back at the end of the month I can see what I projected to have come out of my account and then what actually came out of my account so let me grab my calculator or my phone I should say and let's add this up so I have 133 is 20 my bills and expenses should be about $1,418 seven cents so now that we have that down i'm going to go ahead and move on to cash envelopes now i do cash envelopes because i have issues in certain areas where i overspend and the best way to control that in my opinion and my situation is doing cash envelopes so i'm going to go ahead and set up what i expect to put on my cash envelopes for this month so i have three main um, cash envelopes. We have groceries, we have gasoline, and gasoline is not an issue, but it saves me like 10 cents, so that's why I do it. I pay cash because it saves me 10 cents and I don't mind walking to the um, counter for it. And then spending because 
I'm a free spirit and I swipe like there's no tomorrow and that's just for that's just like money that I allow myself to spend without care and it can be on food coffee luxe stuff or you know leather goods anything that's where that comes from so those are my cash envelopes so that is what I fund all the time and um, for groceries, I did say that I did like to have 375, I believe, for groceries. I feel like that number has like just really worked out for us. And then for gasoline, um, I'm doing 60, but that might get adjusted depending if I go back to work. So everything depends on how the month goes. Like this is just an overcast, like a forecast of what your month will look like. And then as the month progresses and you see how the change is happening, then you go ahead and add to it or change the numbers and so on. Now for spending, I did decide that um, in order for me to stop having unbudgeted and stop being over budget, I'm gonna go ahead and just give myself $250. It was working perfectly for me so if I feel like it's too much in this month then I'm just going to keep adjusting it but this is a good quantity for me to have so I don't have so many unbudgeted expenses that I'm just like there's no point into a budget if it's not realistic so yeah that is the reasoning behind those numbers because the one thing that people do the most is that they fall for like the you know the conformities of what people have to say and no one will know your budget except for yourself. You know how much you spend on food. You know how much you spend on groceries. You know how much you spend on gasoline. And there is no point for you to listen to a stranger tell you, oh, that's too much or that's too little. If you know in reality, it works for you. So the thing about um, budgeting is that it's personal and it's only for you and your needs and what benefits your lifestyle so just keep that in mind you guys that is what budgeting is for is to make sure that you are realistically putting down numbers that work for your lifestyle not what people say not about some formula not if you're living on some percentage no write down the numbers that work for you because if at the end of the day you're having so many unbudgeted because you're starving yourself with spending money you know that seems like that's a red flag if you don't have enough food by the end of the month because you decided to tighten your grocery budget and you can't manage to make it work that's a red flag and you need to fix it so the good thing about budgets is that you can always adjust 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 so anyway, let's get to how much I need for cash envelopes. And this, I do pull out cash, you guys. So 375, 60. I have a total cash pullout of 685 for the month. Now, after this, I like to have a miscellaneous category. This is actually new to my budget kits because um, I used to clump up everything together. And now I was just like, you know what? Let me separate everything. So for miscellaneous, is everything else that's happening in the month that is not necessarily important and that you could probably get away with not having it happen. So for me, the first thing that I have to do is think about the events that are happening in the month. So birthdays. So I'm going to go ahead and put that here. A lot of people had asked me why I didn't put birthdays as a sinking fund. And the reason is because birthdays can vary so much depending on the person. It can be uh, $40 to $200 per person. And honestly, I don't want to have a sinking fund that I need to fill up almost constantly. So take for instance, January is very birthday heavy which means I would deplete it like instantly. And then I have February birthdays, instantly deplete it. And then March, instantly, instantly deplete it. So having a sinking fund for birthdays in my situation just doesn't work out because I have so many birthdays back to back that it just doesn't make sense to have it. And I'd rather just cash flow it within my paychecks. So I'm going to go ahead and budget 140 for birthdays. This includes gifts, eating out, or like not eating out, but like takeout <laughs> and cake, you know? So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that there. And if you guys know from my 2021 sinking fund setup, I do have sinking fund 
goals and I'm gonna go ahead and put those here. So the first category, which are always usually the categories that I set up, is for my cart maintenance fund. And this is like for oil changes, anything that my car might need. I have that, medical payments, so any copays, prescriptions, all of that stuff, I have a sinking fund for it. And then um, I have two sinking funds that I'm working towards to, to have by like July and um, Black Friday. So these are ones that I usually, if I can do it, I'll do it. If not, you know, I can scratch them off. So like this, like I said, this whole section can be like, you know, scratch off. If it doesn't fit in the budget, then don't do it. But if you want to go ahead and accomplish that, then you can go ahead and do it here. And for that, um, I have a Nordstrom cell. This is the one time I shop for clothing. I literally just go ahead and buy jeans and shirts and all the stuff that I need. And for that, um, I would like to make a sinking fund for it because I've always caught myself in the past shopping the sale but unprepared. And like 2021, I want to be prepared. <laughs> and then for the last one is Black Friday. I want to be able to buy some appliances. So, um, I decided that me and Bay are gonna go, you know, together on it and see if we can go ahead and accomplish that goal. So for cart maintenance, I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can throw forty dollars at it. I'm uh, for copays. I'm gonna do twenty five. For Nordstrom sale would be sixty dollars, and then Black Friday would be forty dollars. Now, like I said, these are just optional categories. You don't have to do it, but if you want to go ahead and tackle that, then you can you can see where is it that you want to throw your money at. So I'm going to go ahead and make my lines. I wrote a little overboard, so that's fine. I don't mind. I'm going to go ahead and add this category up. So let's do 140, 40, 25, 60, 40. I'm looking about saving $305 this month for miscellaneous things I want to accomplish. And now the whole point of creating this budget is for you to see how much money you have left over or how much money you are in the negative and you're gonna have to somehow, one, condense your budget more, become more stricter, or um, see where you can um, create more income for yourself. So I'm going to go ahead and put income because this is what we're in the green for. And then I'm going to go ahead and take care of myself first. So I'm going to do bills and expenses and then my cash envelopes. And then if I have um, extra income, I'm going to go ahead and do miscellaneous. Now, if you're wondering where is my debt payment, I usually take whatever's remaining and throw it at that or when I'm looking at my budgets throughout the month, if I don't want to do this, then this will become my debt payment. So I do put it here, but uh, I'm never certain of how much it's going to be in a month. Usually my baby step two debt snowball is around 1500 But with all the savings goals I want to reach this month, we're going to see how... I, I go about it. Um, I didn't add my income, but the expected income is 1248.32 times 2. I'm expected to make about 2496.64. I'm expected to have $1,418.67 in bills, $685 for my cash envelopes, and $305 for savings. Now, if you want to make this a zero-based budget, anything that you have left over, you assign it a job, okay? That's the whole purpose of zero-based budgeting as well. So let me go ahead and now let's take out all those bills. Because this is how the reality of budgeting starts hitting you. You're like, ooh, my money <laughs> its going away instantly. So it looks like... If I focus on savings, I will only have 
and 97 cents left to pay for my debt. Now knowing me, I know that's not gonna be a thing, but I'm gonna go ahead and write it down here, 87, 97, and I will go ahead and create that zero base budget in case you follow the Dave Ramsey um, budgeting method. His method is that you assign every dollar a job and that way when you have a remaining it should be zero. So that's all I did. I put anything that was remaining which was that 87.97 as you know a job that I already have. So at the end of the month I can have zero dollars for all the income that came in because everything has a job. Whether it's to savings, to my cash envelopes, to my living costs, everything has a job. So this is how the month of January is supposed to look like. Of course, I can go ahead and make side hustle income because of YouTube, because of my sticker shop, because of mileage um, reimbursement. So I do have extra income coming in the month. So just be aware that these numbers might not look the same, like $87. It might just be bigger for my debt payment because I am, you know, on my debt-free journey. But that's how it's looking like in case you were interested in how to set up a monthly budget. Okay, I talked way too much and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any questions down below and I'll talk to you later. Bye, you guys. Bye.